Alrighty, it says we are live. I want to start off by saying that based on the title of the video that uh, everybody's obviously reading, um, this isn't going to be quite what you think it is. I'm not here to say the conspiracy theorists are wrong and the skeptics are right. I'm not here to say that the um, skeptics are wrong and the conspiracy theorists are right. I'm actually here on this to point out that the idea of something being a conspiracy theory or not is a ridiculous dichotomy and it's just an idiotic distraction. I'm going to explain this very simply. All right, well, let's see. What's a conspiracy? By default, the word conspiracy means two or more people are conspiring or planning to do something. So, you know, Jay, I can conspire uh, with you to go have lunch or something, if I lived in Phoenix. I'm in Chicago, but, you know. And just because there's a plan doesn't mean that plan is going to take place. So, no. people, yeah. so We could conspire to have lunch, but the probability right now that I being in Phoenix and would put it at a later date, it doesn't mean that it is isn't this real and that we couldn't possibly accomplish it if I got on a jet or something. Yeah. Um, so the idea of a conspiracy just means two or more people are planning something and that may or may not take place. So the idea of something being a conspiracy theory or not is totally and completely irrelevant. Like that idea doesn't even apply to anything. You know, all that dichotomy is is an excuse for two groups of people to feel all self-righteous and justified and, you know, go at each other's throats. You know, it, so it's all just a really stupid dichotomy. Let's replace the word conspiracy theory with chocolate ice cream theory. Is it real chocolate ice cream? Or is it one of those crazy chocolate ice cream theories, you know. And then you've got the chocolate ice cream theory debunkers and, you know, all this just stupid BS. Because, you know, you get all these so-called skeptics, which are really just cynics. You know, the cynical and the gullible are both the idea that they believe whatever they believe and they're not open to believing anything else. So, Two sides of the same coin. Cynicism is C-I-A. Cynicism equals ignorance plus arrogance. So the cynics are out to prove their point at all costs. But the conspiracy theorists are out to do the exact same thing. That's why the conspiracy theorists tend to battle each other and the cynics battle each other. And then they all, both camps besides the infighting, then, you know, go at each other. It's like a kindergarten classroom with no adults in the room, and there's just total chaos, and, you know, you've got everybody arguing over toy trucks. That's essentially what it boils down to. It's like bank robbers rob banks, right? This is a no-brainer. So, you know, for someone to be like, hey, bank robbers rob banks, and someone be like, oh, my God, that's another conspiracy night. It's just like... Guys, come on, you know, get real. Let, let's let's put it out there, George Carlin and Bill Hicks style, okay? You got the masses of people called humanity divided into their own little groups we call countries because, you know, we have a society, not a civilization. They haven't really learned to be civilized yet. So you got all these different groups that separate into countries that want to have these, you know, whose dick is bigger contests with each other. So you've got that. And within each of these countries, you've got the masses of people that don't want to take any responsibility. Um, they want to be babied. They want to be perpetual three-year-olds. And they want, you know, a slave master to lord it over them do all their thinking for them and tell them what to do. They want, you know, mommy and daddy, basically. And, of course, the only people who are going to, to want to lord it over everybody 
people who get off on that, almost like it's a sexual fetish, is going to be psychopaths. And psychopaths are very charming individuals. They know how to put on an act. They don't have any empathy. So they can get up there and, you know, whip out the snake oil and pull the con on the masses. It's just a, it's a bigger version of, you know, the Old West charlatan rolling up with his buggy of, of bullcrap and going to the people, oh, yeah, buy my wonder elixir. It'll cure everything. And that guy's long gone out of town by the time the people realize that they've been duped. So, you know, it's the same sort of thing. If you look at it logically and rationally and look at what this society promotes, it promotes apathy, it promotes prejudice, it promotes self-abuse and not giving ourselves the right to be who we are. So of course, we're not going to give anybody else the right to be who they are. We're going to be like, oh, you like that? That's stupid. You suck. You're, you're lame. You need to be in this cool crowd over here. It's all grade school, high school, you know, sort of mentality. So we carry that out in the adult world. So what do we have? We have these big, huge, rich corporate warmongers that, you know, rule the world from the sideline, their little corporate board rule, the boardrooms, whatever you want to call it, and that's what run things, runs things right now. You know, whether you want to face this or not, whether this is convenient information or inconvenient information, that's the simple point of it. So, you know, it doesn't take conspiracy theory or anything like that to realize that war is a racket. Genocide is a racket. You know, and people who are willing to actually do their research and even be open to the data that they don't like. You know, a lot of these so-called researchers, they'll only look at the data which matches their world view, but they're not open to, to anything else outside of that box. So that's another reason you got all this bickering and bitching back and forth. But if you really look at all of the information that's available and think critically and use that brain that's in your head, then it's it's really a no-brainer. Yeah, war's a racket. Genocide's a racket. Corruption's a racket. You got all these big, rich, powerful people that are big, rich, and powerful because we, the masses, have said, all right, we need babysitters. We don't want to think for ourselves, so... You do our thinking for us while we sit here and drink beer and get fat and stupid and watch America's Top Model and whatever. So we're going to do that while, while you run the world. I mean, you know, think about what sort of chaos that creates. Again, going back to a kindergarten classroom. What if you put a kindergartner in charge of the classroom and gave them complete and total impunity? What are they going to do to the rest of the kindergartners? It's going to be complete and total chaos. So, you know, this doesn't require conspiracy theory. Oh, my God. Criminals do criminal things. And the more money and resources you give to a criminal, they're going to do bigger, better criminal things. They're going to have wars. They're going to have genocides. They're going to set up a banking platform, fractional reserve banking, that's a big freaking scam that makes people debt slaves forever. I mean, this isn't conspiracy theory. It is not a such a far-fetched idea that assholes are going to be assholes and violent people are going to be violent. It's no, no more a leap of logic than saying, oh, a rattlesnake is going to be a rattlesnake and not a fish. So it's really, really stupidly simple. But people do not want to step outside their comfort zones. They want to stay with whatever information feels comfortable to them, whether it's true or not. And the idea of something being good or bad, quote-unquote, doesn't even apply either because <clears throat> there's a lot of really horrible self-destructive stuff that humans get comfortable with and attach to. And a lot of really good, wonderful, positive stuff that people hate, that they, they freak out about and they push away because when they've decided that their reality that
they are comfortable with is, you know, all this destructive stuff, and they have such low self-esteem and low self-worth that they feel that all they can do is punish themselves. I mean, what do you think that's going to create? Do you think that the 18-year age mark is some, like, magical line that's got, like, you know, Peter Pan and pixie dust and everything, and that, you know, when you cross that line, all of the psychological and emotional abuse inflicted by others and or by self and by society and all of that, that some magic wand is going to be waved and it's going to just completely purge you of, of everything when you cross that line and then suddenly magically all of this wisdom and enlightenment and intelligence and all that is, is going to be installed into you because you cross this magical line and then you're going to go forth and create this wonderful utopian society where everyone's got equal rights and and everybody can agree to disagree and that even if somebody hates somebody else it's not going to lead to war and we're going to have all these productive systems that are going to benefit humanity hell no even einstein said that it, it that your thinking determines what the reality is that if you view a problem you know, and you try to find the solution to that problem, and you use the same thinking for the solution that created the problem, then you're screwed. You're just going to get more of the problem. So this whole idea of something being a conspiracy theory or not is the exact same idea of Harry Potter's cool, man. <clears throat> no, it's not. Harry Potter sucks. Twilight's cool. No, Twilight sucks. Fuck you. Harry Potter's awesome. It's the same exact argument. Oh, you're a nutty conspiracy theorist. Oh, well, well, you're you're in a sleep sheep, you stupid cynic. And, you know, sometimes I think people need to wake up from their awakening when they wake up. Because, you know, when people start awakening and they get into all the conspiracy theorist mentality, they're only like half awake. They're still operating with the programming of a sheep. They're just utilizing different information. Think of the sheep programming as, as, as like a web browser, like, you know, Firefox for sheep or something. So prior to your quote-unquote awakening, you were loading up all the, the, the mainstream stories and whatever in your, your web browser here. And now all of a sudden, you have this new information loaded into the web browser. Well, if the web browser you're using is a piece of shit, it doesn't matter what you're loading into it. Your experience is going to be shit. Like, you know, w you know, Windows and Internet Explorer, these things are totally open to exploitation and problems. Things like Linux and other operating systems, you know, you don't have such a problem with that. But because we are trained to think that our mainstream corporate media masters have to tell us what's good for us. So if they're not saying it's good, then it must suck. It must not be good. So we're going to avoid that. Because even if that other thing that they're not talking about is better... Well, you know, I'm, I'm not smart enough to deal with that, and I'm stupid, and I, I don't want to take responsibility anyway. You know, I've got my, my babysitters to do my thinking for me, and going in this, these other directions would require, I think, for myself, and then that might destroy all my illusions that, that I'm addicted to. And then I might sit there and cry in a corner and, and piss and moan about how reality isn't what I thought it was, and that I've just been self-delusional and, and, you know, da-da-da-da-da. So, what do you have to say about that, Jay? Well, uh, let's go to the first. Uh, this is a world of infinite possibilities. Uh, we get so distracted <laughs> on, on all these things, and we try to limit ourselves instead of allowing things to happen that uh, we kind of get get uh, get stuck up with the things that don't really matter. Um, your personal life is your personal life. Um, it doesn't give you the right to uh, 
try to influence another's uh, personal life, like to tell them it's wrong or anything else. You, uh, this the problem is is everyone's manipulating, trying to manipulate everyone to have the same view as them. <laughs> everyone's a Nazi while 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 preaching about freedom. Oh, Hypocr yeah. Hypocrisy. <laughs> Yeah, freedom Nazi. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good term, I think. We'll use yeah. that. Uh, actually, Nazi. actually, more on like military intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one, usually the ones that in intelligence are the ones that keep quiet. They they don't want to keep their mouth quiet. That's how you can tell real intelligence. Because that things are apt to change in any direction. Yeah, there's this picture that I <clears throat> I saw posted on Facebook that I shared. That's got you know these guys at um at a football game and they're all like dressed up and you know all this elaborate stuff and got face paint on and yelling and whatever. And it says, imagine if people were this passionate about things that actually matter. <laughs> And you know that is that is so true. Um, if we took all this energy that we waste on, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, nutcase, and oh, you're a sleep cheap, and I'm getting feedback real bad from your end now, Jay. Okay, I'll, I'll lower it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but you know. All this energy people put in fighting each other with, like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist idiot. Oh, well, you're a stupid and sleep sheep cynic, and you, and you know all this back and forth shit. If we took the energy that we put into that and actually put it into being the change we want to create, I mean, if we would remove all these, you know, limiting belief systems and just work on ourselves and stop worrying about everybody else, then, uh, well, everybody's bickering and bitching. You know, we'll be setting up platforms for things for people to deal with, and then when we get the first versions of that created, then we go to everybody and say, hey, guess what I did over here? You can use it or not. That's up to you. You know, and that's what a lot of people have done, and that is actually what works. I mean, you know, look at, look at like, Wikipedia, for example. Um, everybody thought that thing would fail, but it worked out big time. Um, look at uh, you know Bitcoin and um, open source software and you know um, freeware and you know BitTorrent and P2P and you know you've got all these all these different ideas that people took it upon themselves to come up with and create. And even though these things might be really big and, and elaborate with a lot of bells and whistles now, these things have really humble origins. Um, for most of the stuff, you know, it didn't take some big corporate team of, you know, 150 really badass programmers getting together in some boardroom. I mean, most of the time it was just some 15-year-old fucking around and <clears throat> putting a piece of software together. And when they were done, they put it out there, and it had very basic, limited functions. But then other programmers were like, wow, this is really cool. You know, this has some potential. Let's see how far we can take this potential. And then it carries forward from there. And the reason that happened is because while well, everybody else was bickering and bitching about... I'm getting feedback again, Jeff. Okay. How's that? Oh, well, we'll see. So far, so, oh, that's still feedback. Can you, like, mute your mic for a second or something? Yeah, hold on. You can do that through the uh, Hangout interface. You don't have to do that through the computer. If you just hover over the box, there's a little thing for mute microphone. You can do that. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, um, so like I was saying... Well, everybody else was bickering and bitching over here. Someone, you know, took it upon themselves to create something. And it had very simple origins. It wasn't this big, huge, you know, full bells and whistles thing. But it was the basics of an idea. And when they had that idea, they put it out there. 
and the people you know who took their little breaks from bickering and bitching to pay attention for a second to anything else looked at that and they were like oh cool you know let's play with this so then people started doing instead of bickering and bitching and ranting and pissing and moaning so if people would you know stop focusing on the idea of oh well that's a stupid conspiracy theory or no it's not shut up I'm right and blah 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 if people would would stop all that crap and if they would just focus on being the change that they want to create I mean even Kennedy said something similar Kennedy said um, ask not what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country what he was saying is that you are a part of your country that the direction your country is going to go depends on the people of that country not politicians so Kennedy is asking you to ask yourself well who am I and what can, what can I do what are my capabilities what do I want to do and if I feel I don't have the capabilities to do something I want to do how can I obtain the capabilities how can I obtain the knowledge uh, who else has a similar interest to me that I could talk to and work together with Kennedy was encouraging independent thought, critical thinking, discernment, taking initiative, taking responsibility. And this is an attitude that, you know, we in the United States and in most of the world kind of are lacking. You know, we're slowly starting to wake up to it the hard way. You know, desperation breeds genius. Things are getting rough, so people are being forced to think outside the box. But, you know, hopefully people see my point here. And the more we make the world a better place individually, all of the power that the corporate elites or Illuminati or whatever the hell you want to call them, who cares? It's all just buzzwords anyway. People get so hung up on freaking buzzwords. You know, whatever it is you want to call them, um, the less power they will have, the more we start taking back our individual power. I mean, can you know, think of it like a, a football team and a coach. If every member of the football team, you know, unanimously said to the coach, well, you know, that order you're giving us, coach, we really don't want to want to follow that right now. That's not something we want to do. What can the coach do? Nothing. I mean, you know, you got this full team of big strapping muscular guys against like this one coach. You know, what would you think if you were that coach, you know? Do you think that you could physically take all those guys? Would you be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to whoop all your asses. I'm, I'm Superman. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. No, of course not. You know, you would be like, well, if these guys have made up their minds and there's not really anything I could do about it. So we, the people, as individuals, need to be like members of that kind of team and the more we allow ourselves to think critically, to be independent individuals with respect for everybody else's right to the same, the more like-minded people come together and start to change the structures of how things work. Because if you really think about it, if you want to change all the fish in the ocean, what's the easiest way to do it? Catch out each fish individually or change the entire ocean, thus then modifying all the fish. So it's the same sort of idea. If we change the environment around these corporate control freak psychopaths so that their BS didn't work anymore, then they'd just be reduced to the equivalence of screaming three-year-olds bitching that they're not able to get their way and you know no one will listen to them anymore. You know, imagine if all soldiers on all from all countries everywhere were to one day decide, nah, fuck it, we're done with war. This war is just stupid. You know, I, 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 we, it's better to make businesses and trade with each other and, you know, ma make life better instead of going to war. Imagine if everybody decided that, were to decide that all at once. I mean, that's not going to happen that way. It's just an, an example to, to make a, a point. But, you know, do, do you think that these, you know, corporate psychos that, you know, are ruining our environment and waging all these stupid wars for resources and all this other crap. I mean, 
And do you really think that that little bitty tiny minority is going to be able to walk up to freaking 7 billion people and be like, look, you're going to keep doing what we say? Of course not. We just like laugh at them and what, could, what would they be able to do about it other than tantrum? And that sort of change is obviously not going to happen overnight. But it does happen one by one, each individual realizing that it only takes a spark to get a fire going. You don't have to be the whole fire. You can just be the spark. So the idea of something being a conspiracy theory or not is ridiculous. So hence the title of this video. That's what I'm debunking. I'm debunking the dichotomy. I'm not saying conspiracy theorists are wrong and skeptics are right. I'm not saying that skeptics are right. Conspiracy theorists are wrong. I'm saying that everyone's bickering and bitching like a bunch of fucking three-year-olds and grow up. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. Oh, oh, Jay, I'm gonna conspire with you to, you know, to go have lunch. That that may or may not happen, but I, I'm I'm conspiring. Ooh, is that a chocolate ice cream theory or is that real chocolate ice cream? I mean, look at how stupid the whole dichotomy sounds. It's just completely freaking lame. And everyone is just there to try to justify their existing belief systems, no matter whether you're on the side of, of the cynics or, or the conspiracy theorists or what side of the camp you're on there. doesn't matter. Everybody's looking to have their big dick contest to wave their ego around and go, Look at me. I'm so right. And all you other motherfuckers, you're so wrong. And I'm going to call you a poopy head and say how wrong you are because you're just wrong, wrong, wrong. And, and that's all it is, regardless of, you know, whether you're on the conspiracy theory side of things or whether you're on the, you know, the, the, the cynical side of things, looking at them and going, oh, they're nuts, you know. 9-11 and inside job? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Well, even Congress said it's an inside job. You know, even Congress said that the whole, you know, 9-11 Commission report reads like fiction and, you know, all that other stuff. And, you know, that's just, that's that's a fact. That's what Congress said. And if a so-called skeptic or cynic or whatever doesn't want to look into that, doesn't want to research into that, you know, and only wants to look at the materials that they feel back their own paradigm, well, hey, whatever. You know, and the same to the conspiracy nuts, quote unquote. The conspiracy nuts also will not look into any information that is outside of their box. So it's all the same to me. It's all the same little kindergartners that are out of control and at each other's throats and wanting to feel all righteous and justified and whatever. And it's all just completely retarded. And, you know, the, the skeptics slash cynics and the conspiracy theorists, both camps are probably not going to like what I have to say about this. So look at it this way. At least now you guys can agree on one thing, even if it's only that one thing ever, that Dave Kelso is a meanie poopy face and saying all this stuff that both of you agree that none of you like. So, you know, look on the bright side. At least you that finally y'all you, can agree on one thing, even if it's only that one thing ever. <laughs> Your thoughts, Jay? I, I, I look at it this way. It's much, it's, uh, it's much like religion. Uh, um, you know... Everyone has a different opinion of what's right and wrong, but they're all they all have a different view, and there's no view totally correct or totally wrong. They're just views. But if you start combining all these views, it gives you insight to all kinds of things that you, you normally wouldn't get. And so, what you got to become is unbiased and un unprejudiced and not place judgment on things. Things are happening and you take them as a matter of fact, not as a matter of personal affront or anything else. Problem yeah, is, data is just data, right? You know, you're allowed to, to make your own assessment of it and have your own opinion, even if you're the only one in the world that has that particular opinion. Oh, it's not right or wrong, it's just your right to be you. We have a tendency to take non-personal things personal. 
And that's why we get in so many wars. Yeah, like if if we if people had a belief system that fire is evil, then they might see that like people who use fire are like minions of Satan. And then like we'd never have any technology. <laughs> so it's it's like that sort of thing. It's a really simple, stupid thing, but you know, it's 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 the little things that have the biggest impacts a lot of the time. Well, if we're all part of God and we're in his image, so basically we have the same attributes, so we should start acting like the gods that we are, instead of acting immature like children. Jesus, know? Jesus said, "Everything I've done, you can do in greater still." Yeah. But then, but then, modern day religion is like, "Oh well, you better not listen to Jesus on that." You better not try to do that, otherwise you're a naughty boy. You're a naughty girl. You're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so ridiculous. It's like, you know, hey, if you're a Christian, do you believe the words of Christ are true or not? And if you do, then why are you making exceptions? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you if you read the New Testament, the only important part is what he had to say, not what his disciples had to say. <laughs> you know, all the rest. Um, thank him. That he's the only one that experienced this, this consciousness. So where do you go? To the one who, who's had the consciousness? Or do you go to, uh, to someone that is being instructed on by him that has not experienced it? You know, yeah, when you want yeah. to rebuild the World Trade Center, do you hire a bunch of kindergartners or do you hire construction workers? <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, using what you're using is hearsay. You're not, you're not the person who's not experiencing it, but is giving their opinion of it, even if they're a follower, may not be correct. The only one that has the correctness is the one who, who, who had the condition that became illuminated. And when he expresses himself, you may get a, a certain amount of perception of it and an idea, but, you know, words are very um, fickle. Yeah, uh, words can be very slippery like that. And, you know, a lot of us, we're, we're not open to having, you know, those experiences. So it's it's not that we can't have experience. It's just, you know, we have all these belief systems of, you know, this is cool and this is lame and we can do this and we can't do that. And, you know, we're, we're worshipping these authorities, you know, we're worshipping information as a god. We're worshipping a church run by humans as a god. We're worshipping the state as a god and we're not allowing ourselves to be individuals and and learn from our own mistakes and have our own experiences in fact we were taught that that not knowing means we're stupid even though it's the, it's the beginning of knowledge before you know something you don't and we're taught that making mistakes makes us weak but even Einstein said that anyone who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. So, you know, we've got all these really stupid, you know, sort of Harry Potter's cool and Twilight sucks sort of idiot, like, you know, six-year-old mentalities going on about everything. Even to the point that, you know, science has even become such a religion that they call their belief systems a doctrine. And they tell people not to go outside of that doctrine, otherwise it's not real science. It's like, wait a minute, I thought science was supposed to be the, the exploration of reality, not to prejudge what is or isn't true, not to prove, try to take what you already think and prove it right, or prove it wrong for that matter, but to just explore and see what's there. That, that whatever you find out there, you find out there, and whatever it is, it is. Not like, oh, well, I expect to find this, so I'm only going to look where I think I'll find this, and well, fuck everybody else and everywhere else. Screw looking over there. That's only an idiot would look over there. That's a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. You know, and we're wait, operating on that mentality. What's up? Wait till the scientists start 
learning to qu quantify thought <laughs> and and realize that thought is actually a substance. Yeah, well, everything's made of energy. Yeah. Right. Well, I basically think science has already proven that anyway. Because even if you look at it on the biological level, um, the human body has a central nervous system, you know, running through it, right? It's, you got a brain in your head. So as you're sitting there having thoughts, if, if thoughts didn't exist in some way, shape, or form, you, you wouldn't be able to have them. So, you know, it's like the, just by default of being able to experience thought through a physical body means that those thoughts exist in some way, shape, or form. I'm not making claim as to what way, what shape, or what form, but just simply that if they didn't exist in some way, shape, or form, we wouldn't be able to perceive them. You well, wouldn't be able to say, hey, I just had a thought, because you can't have something that doesn't exist. And think of this way, uh, and since scientists working with quantum, their expectation uh, controls the experiment, causes the particles to collapse in a certain way. Yeah, they've already and, proven that with the, with the double slit experiment. Yeah, and when you observe, when you're observing it, it behaves differently, it collapses and becomes a particle. Yeah, also called the measurement problem, but the, you know the idea that everything is in superposition, a, a particle is both a wave function and a particle a, at the exact same time, and it, it's definitely an interesting, and you know what, that, that, that's another thing, if you know, if, if um, a particle is a wave and a particle at the same time, and everything is made of this stuff, then that makes the idea of something being a conspiracy a conspiracy theory or not even more retarded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, because if that's the way reality works, then you know it's like asking like the marital status of the number five or the political orientation of the tuna fish sandwich. Well, is that a conspiracy theory or is it real? It's like, well, uh, gee, is the number five married or a bachelor? Oh, take the waveform. In a waveform. You think of it much like a circle. Half half the circle is negative, and half the circle is going to be polarized positive. And what the circle is doing is spinning around at a very high speed. So at a certain moment it is positive, and a certain moment it is negative. Uh, where you have alternating, it's basically like alternating current. Yeah. Well, that's how atoms exist in, in the first place, because atoms aren't actually physical things. They're just patterns of energy spinning around within electromagnetic fields. Um, it, that's, that's actually the way it works anyway. If you were to actually stop the spin of all the atoms, there would like be no physical reality, because the illusion of um, solidity is created by that spin. You know, when you when you spin something fast enough, it, it it appears to be one solid mass, even if it's just a bunch of little parts that are spinning so fast that you can't move yourself fast enough to be able to get between them. So it it seems like it's solid, but it's really not. Uh yeah, well it's like this. Well, uh, First thing it said in the Bible that God created the heaven and the earth, and and at that time it was in a void. It was just a thought, but uh, so we know a thought exists without being polarized into what you call light. Yet, so a thought of an object is actually an object. Big, the Big Bang uh, theory, you know, pretty much says basically the same thing as the Bible. Let there be light, <laughs> you know, and then there was, and you know, the the matter and void separated, you know, and there was a firmament and so on and so forth. You've got well, space, you've got time, you've got matter. Well, basically, what's void is. Uh, is the energy that's not moving. Once it starts moving, and you have time, space, matter, light. Yeah, well, all time is is, is um, movement through space. It's really right. all time is. 
space and time are one thing. If you don't have movement through space and you don't have time. But if you, when you have void, you also everything exists at the same place because you're a singularity. Yeah, then it's that's outside the idea of space and time. Yeah. That's that's why like the whole idea of you can't go faster than light, but because light has a limit, that means it's contained in something. So if you can go outside of that container, then you don't you don't need to break the uh, the light barrier because you could travel you know between point A and point B regardless of the speed of light limitation because you're kind of taking the quantum shortcut. You're going outside of that container. Because well, it, anything that has a limit is inside of a container, and if it's inside a container, there's the idea of outside the container. And if you uh, take it further, the, every particle is spread all over the universe. They're just reflections of the, the one particle, so to speak. Yeah, again, and it's... They're, it's all, they're all quantum entangled. Yeah, exactly. It's that whole solidity being an illusion of movement, if you if you took the same one particle and, and moved it at infinite speed, it would be everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. Science has actually proven that. If like with um, I do believe they use like radiation detectors or something in an experiment, um, you know, dealing with uh, quantum entanglement and things like that, and and. They proved that, that it's just one particle, you know, in, in multiple places. That's why people irritate other people is because all they're doing is mirroring each other, and they don't yeah. realize quantum mirror. And, and it just goes exactly back to the title of this video and what I've been talking about. You know, both sides, whether it's the conspiracy theorists or you know the the, the cynics, um, both sides are doing the same thing. You know they're looking at things from a certain paradigm, um, and they're they're waving their big you know, dick around and wanting to be right and justified and rejecting all information that's outside of their box, and that's why cynics fight with each other and um, conspiracy theorists fight with each other. Like you know, if we could just stop it, okay, we have enough evidence to show that 9/11 was an inside job. Now let's go bring some people into court. If we could stop there, we might actually get something done. But we don't. You've got all these different factions saying, oh, they, they, there were planes. No, there were no planes. Or, you know, there were explosives in the building. Or they weren't. Or it was a ray gun. Or it wasn't a ray gun. Or how about who gives a fuck? There, there's, enough, there's enough evidence to prove that something sneaky was going on. Let's bring some people in, into court and let's have a little process of discovery instead of assuming what did or didn't happen. Let's let's go in and explore that. Let's drag some people's butts into courts and get some subpoenas going and have some federal marshals frickin' you know, search whatever needs to be searched and gather everything up and find out what is instead of all the speculation and all these different groups like, Oh, my speculation is the only correct one and no oh, your speculation bullshit and all these people going at each other's throats like like you know, like Alex Jones um, doesn't want to look at the the evidence of the um, you know quote unquote no planes theory, the holographic manipulation and computer manipulation stuff, and he calls those people nuts. And it's like, wait a minute, Alex, you're sitting here saying 9/11 was an inside job, but someone else who's saying the same thing but only has a slightly different view, you're calling them a conspiracy nut while you're getting mad at the quote-unquote sleeping sheeple for calling you a conspiracy nut? I mean, pot kettle black here, dude. <laughs> well, well, I like to look at it this way. If you have an opinion and another's opinion irritates you. That's the point you need to go in inward. It's, it's mirroring in you you what is upsetting you so it's bringing it to the surface from your subconscious and you could look at the feelings and why you feel that way and you can sort of remove the dirt from the self and also the judgment as well yeah you know, I mean that's totally true because everything that really irritates us is just an external reflection of something internally that we don't want to look at and like a really simple example, like 
it, just very simple basic fears. Why are some people afraid of some things, but there's other people that are not afraid of those things at all? I mean, they've got the same physical brain. It's not like they're two totally different types of humans or something biologically. It's not like one is from some other planet somewhere with a different brain configuration. They're both humans. The mm. fear is a belief system. And, like, you know, let's say, for example, it's spiders, you know. Somebody's mm. got a fear of spiders. Well, those who don't have a fear of spiders might be able to go into scientific positions later on in life and research spiders. And those people discover things like how the, 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 the fiber of the spider's web um, is actually stronger than steel. And if we could figure out a way to bring that up to a larger scale, we could make really lightweight fabrics that have the strength greater than steel. But the person who's scared shitless of spiders is never going to go in the, in the direction you know, of that study of research. So... All fears are based on belief systems and judgments. So when we look at something or someone on, on the external and they're really pushing our buttons and irking us off, they're oh, just they're... reflecting an insecurity that we have, a fear that we have. And we can, no we can address that and balance that out and you know get rid of that baggage. Or we could lash out at the other person and go, how dare you be yourself? You're supposed to be who I say you're supposed to be, motherfucker. Now, I'm the freedom Nazi, so freedom my way, not yours. So be who I say you have to be, or I'm going to call you a booby head. You know, it's, just all, it's the same well, stupidity. Well, then again, it don't have to be a belief system. It could be a trauma from well, a previous memory. Yeah, but the belief, um, that, system, the belief that, systems are created from traumas, though. But the thing is, you'll never know what it is until you look inside. Yeah. If the best way for a person to relieve himself of the fear of spider is to have a spider in a jar in front of him and all of a sudden feel that fear come up and go inside and deal with your fear. Yeah, deal with your demons wow. and face, face your shit. Wow. Find, find out why you're afraid of spiders. It could be a trauma, a bad event when you were a child that you don't remember because you blocked, blocked it off, or it can be a belief, but you'll find it by facing it. And you, it's not by facing the external that you, you change the thing. It's by facing the internal. Yeah, we have these belief systems that the idea of being incorrect or wrong about something is supposed to make us weak or stupid. It's it's not. It's a part of learning. But we have that false belief system, and that belief system overlays in both, you know, the um, the cynics and the so-called, you know, conspiracy nuts, and you know. If both both camps say that they're all about discovering the truth, and you know both of them basically consider themselves truthers, the the cynics claim they're standing up for the truth, and the conspiracy nuts claim they're standing up for the truth, but both of them are scared shitless about being wrong. And if they were really standing up for the truth, they wouldn't care whether or not their current views were proven right or wrong, because they'd be open to change because they'd be advocates of the truth. They'd want right. to know what is actually true. But they no. don't. They don't. Neither it's side wants to know what's true. They just want to stay in their box. It's a matter of improvement. You know, once you improve, it's like climbing a ladder. Pretty soon you get to the top. You know, you get, get there. You're going to make mistakes on the way. Now this ladder we're climbing is an endless ladder practice. You know, learning is an endless ladder. You know what else just dawned on me? Like, for what? example, in order to be arrested, all, all there needs to be is suspicion. Like, you don't even have to do something. If the cops even suspect you might possibly have done something, they could take you in. Well, even Congress says the 9-11 Commission report reads like pure fiction. Congress is on, on record saying that. They're very insulted by 
by the way that the commission report has been laid out. It's insulting their intelligence. So that is Congress, you know, one of the so-called highest laws in the land, actually putting suspicion out in regards to a possible criminal activity. So mm. if that's if that would be enough to arrest you and me and get some court cases going and some investigations going, why isn't it enough to arrest the people who run the country? Bush well, and Kissinger and and well, Obama and who you know who whoever else. You know, well, it, it's obvious to me that they're acting with impunity. Because if even just a mild suspicion is enough to land either any of us in jail under suspect, then why would Congress saying, hey, this reads like fiction, why wouldn't that result in some people coming in, in into jail and courts and all that? Well, gee, that's because in that aspect, the conspiracy theorists aren't wrong. We do live in a corrupt world. <laughs> well, the, uh, the biggest problem is that uh, we live in a world of secrets. The first thing they should do is get rid of the National Security Act because, it, first of all, it violates the, the balance of power because we are the ones that put them in office and so we should have knowledge of everything that's going on in government. And, and we should punish the ones that break the law. Well, secrecy allows for control. It also you know, allows. And I mean, people it, say it, say that that's a conspiracy theory. Like, oh, see, you know, secrecy doesn't control anybody. Come on, that's all conspiracy nonsense. Well, <coughs> look at it on the high school level. If you've got dirt on somebody, if a high school student has dirt on another high school student, then that secret gives one high school student power over another. If that right. happens in high school, what makes us think that it doesn't happen in the highest levels of government? Do you really think the human race has matured so much that, gee, they crossed that line called 18 years of age and all their baggage was pixie dust magically taken away and they were injected with all the knowledge and wisdom of the universe? No. We, we get better at what we practice and the more people practice being psychologically fucked up, the better they get at being psychologically fucked up. Then we put them in office and we have the world that we have. Hmm. That's not conspiracy theory to me. That's common well, sense. That's, that's, that's high school. That's grade school. Well, How is that conspiracy theory? What, what I'm saying is secrecy allows uh, for c covering up your mistakes. Uh, e even the criminal ones. Exactly. If the government is not obliged to give the information, <laughs> then it's not obliged uh, to the people that are supposed to be in charge in the first place, which are the, vo the voters. This is our country. They're just our representatives to do our will, not... <laughs> but they, but they become they become a crime syndicate. It just bosses us around, and right. I mean, you know, that's that's not a conspiracy theory. That's yeah. just that's just a fact. The word conspiracy theory shouldn't even apply. You know, Eisenhower warned us about the military industrial complex and secret societies, and so did Kennedy. And it, it, it's a fact that they warned us. I mean, regardless of what anybody wants to think. The recordings of them getting up on TV and saying that, those recordings exist, and you can't undo that. That's not a conspiracy theory. They got up there. These presidents put that information out there. So the idea of something being a conspiracy theory or not is like, you know, asking the marital status of the number five. Whether you're a conspiracy theorist or you're a cynic, it's, it, it's the exact same thing, it's saying... I am in a set of belief systems. I'm unwilling to step outside of that box, and I'm going to wave my dick around and conquer all other belief systems and, and say anybody who's on my side is wonderful, and anybody else who has any other opinion is, is stupid and unintelligent and a government agent or, or a psyop or a paid show or, or, or what whatever. So many different ad hominems that people like you know, waving people's faces, and it's all just name-calling, and it's like third-grade mentality. 
But, you know, that's all it is. That's all the truth movement is. You know, it's like, oh, freedom, I'm all for freedom. But Heil Hitler, it's freedom my way. You know, they don't even realize they're being a Nazi. Like, I'm all for freedom as long as you agree with me. If you don't agree with me, then you need to shut up. You don't have the right to talk. Shut up. Yeah, so much for freedom. Yep, so much for freedom. Well, they'll be shaken out of their boots so they, so they know what what freedom's not. That's why today's revolutionaries are always tomorrow's dictators, because they're using the same thinking. You know, right. just like just like Einstein said, I'll say it again. You know, you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that created the problem. You have to use different thinking. So a revolution of mind has to come before a physical revolution. Otherwise, it's just the same shit. And like Mark Twain said, history never repeats, but it does rhyme. You know, it kind of flows to the same sort of uh, genre there, <laughs> you might say. Yeah, it's time to t take things um, not personal, but make it impersonal. You know, that, uh, don't have judgment on it. Everything is a has a, a valid nature to it. It's data. And then you, what you do is you take from different sources and you can feel feel what is closer to what your own truth is and and that's what you go by for yourself. You, you can't impose it on another. You don't have the right to pose it, impose it on another. Free will means you got that uh, means that you have have free will to do as you choose, not to choose for what everyone else has. Yeah. has. They have the free will to choose what they want for themselves. Do as you will, but, but do no harm. As Max Egan likes to say, there's no such thing as good or bad information. Information is just, you know, information. And as individuals, we're all we're all allowed to have our, our view of it, to like something, to, to dislike something, to agree with something, to, you know, to disagree with something, whatever. And it's that force of will upon another that, you know, creates all the conflicts and problems. That whole idea of, oh, I believe this way, and you have to believe that same way, otherwise, you know, you're naughty, and I'm going to punish you, and... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make your life hell or kill you or whatever because you don't believe as I do, blah, blah, blah. And that's, you know, the, the childish, you know, elementary school sort of mentality taken to the utmost extreme, you know, in this world. And that that's how business operates. That's how religion operates. That's how politics operates. That's how science operates. You know, we're all operating on this, on this meme of you know, feeling all smug and self-righteous and thinking that other people aren't allowed their views. Well, freedom isn't the right to say what you want. Freedom is the right for other people to say what you don't want and don't like and don't approve of. Because if it's not that, then what is freedom and by whose definition? Well, true, true self-righteous is to be righteous, uh, righteously yourself, not to be what others think of you or anything else. It shouldn't matter what another person thinks of you. Uh, that that's immaterial. That's 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 their problem. Yeah, that's also their right to think what they want. All right, you know. I've applied this in my life, and there's so much less drama in my life now as a result. I mean, I'm completely, you know, happy to respect anybody's rights to think whatever they want about anything I'm saying, or even about me. Like you know. But someone could be like, you know, come up and say, hey, Dave, fuck you. I think you're, you're an idiot and a fool and a, and a tool and delusional and deluded. And I, I, I just, I, I don't like you and you suck and go fuck yourself and whatever. And my response is just be like, hey, cool, you know, um, if you think that of me, you have the right to not deal with me. And I don't have the right to force anything on you. So, hey, you know, uh, if I'm not your cup of tea, that's fine. You know, I, I don't, I don't like raw tomatoes. Uh, that doesn't mean like... I'm on this hunt to like destroy all tomato plants or something. I just choose not to eat raw tomatoes. So if I'm not someone's cup of tea, then they're that's their right to feel that way and their right to go 
spend their time with the people and activities that you know they deem are best for them and I don't have the right to walk up to them and be like hey look you have to like me you have to prove of me because if you don't then you're, you're being rude you're doing something wrong and, and blah 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 no no not not at all you know everybody's got the right to you know their preferences their opinions and whatever and when you respect that right and respect your own right to that then you draw more like-minded people to you and the people who aren't very like-minded don't really want anything to do with you and they stay away there's no conflict there's no drama you know it's not like high school grade school you know Harry Potter versus Twilight bullshit but it can be so hard to move into that mentality because we've been programmed to feel so justified like if everybody doesn't like me that means I'm doing something wrong so I gotta make everybody like me somehow and approve of me otherwise that means I'm not a worthy person so it's like you know as we're feeling worthless we're being a Nazi and trying to force everybody to to approve of us so that we can not feel worthless about ourselves but really we create our own happiness and our own sadness and everything else and if we can't change what we don't know so if we don't own our right to our feelings, then we're going to be Nazis. Uh, uh, and boy, you feel it when the stuff <laughs> some the stuff comes up when you you start removing the stuff in the beginning, it gets very intense. Uh, things happen. Uh, the people that you love and that are helping you along have to have the most infinite patience with you because you're seeing things from an unusual view until you deal with your emotions and 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 your traumas and stuff inside it it'll affect you in ways that you will not believe to get rid of it you'll you'll yell scream and holler just to try to get uh, and avoid just to just to hold on to them for a while until you just there'll come a time and you just deal with the things but yeah. a lot of times it'll take you two or three weeks at least <laughs> <laughs> at least I mean the, the the irony of it the joke of it is is that we feel that it is so easy to perceive things as being so difficult you know that's our first reaction to things like oh that's going to be hard I'm not capable of that oh that's going to be take so much time be so much of a burden no oh, that's going to be so difficult to do how am I ever going to do that that that's an easy thought process to come by right I mean that's you know we, we can we can do that no problem it is it is a really easy and flow thing for us to tell ourselves hey I can't do that and I won't do that and I'm not capable of that and that can't happen and that won't happen that's real easy but then it gets hard to think of things in terms of oh yeah I can do that and that can happen and and we could move this this way so the idea of ease is a difficult thing to process and the idea of difficulty is an easy thing to process so is there any longer a, a, any line dividing difficult and easy or did I just nuke it you know oh. well people are used to disease which is um, being ill at, at ease Disease, a mind not at ease that creates a right. body not at ease. Because the right. psychology and emotions control the, the central nervous system and the brain and, and the immune system. So the more stress you put on yourself, the more stress hormone comes out of your hypothalamus and that totally like corrodes your body and starts making things malfunction. So of course you're going to get sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it's because you're holding all your emotions and stuff in. And trying to push them down instead of dealing with them. And uh, once you start getting rid of uh, facing all the things inside you, things become easier. So much so that it'll it'll even frighten you at first. Yeah, I mean, even even this topic and in, in the way we're discussing it, it's going to create a lot of cognitive dissonance for a lot of people, and that's. That's kind of why I'm putting it out there in, the, in this format because, you know, they read the title, you know, debunking, you know, every conspiracy theory and, you know, a, a person's initial reaction might be like, oh, 
that, that this person's going to talk about how conspiracy theorists are full of shit. So the conspiracy theorists click on it, listening to me, waiting for something to attack. And the skeptics are going to click on it, waiting for something to nod and smile and agree with. And then they're both going to be disappointed as I say, hey, you're both a part of the same full of shitness, you know, so to speak. Because you both just want to view yourselves as right and bicker and battle it out. Because data is data regardless. So, you know, the idea about something being a conspiracy theory, you're not as stupid. To conspire just means two or more people have a plan to do something. I can conspire to go have lunch. So it's just really ridiculous. Like, you know, someone could say, oh, bank robbers rob banks. Oh, my God, you're a conspiracy nut. I mean, it's all just an excuse for people to bicker and bitch. Asking whether or not something is a conspiracy theory is like asking the marital status of the number five. Oh, is the number five married or a bachelor? Oh, the number five is 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 married and has a harem of the of all the other numbers. But no, that's stupid. All the other numbers exist as individual single entities. The number five is single. No, number five is married. I mean, how ridiculous of a of a, a debate would that be? Now imagine if somebody took that debate seriously and actually thought there was a conclusion they could go to on that. That's the whole idea of whether or not something is or isn't a conspiracy theory. It's childish. And it's just all these conspiracy theorists bicker and bitch with each other, all the, you know, so called skeptics, cynics. They bicker and bitch with each other. But it's all about waving their dicks around in everybody else's face so that they're trying to get everybody else to say, oh, yeah, you're so right. And then anybody who says, no, I have a different opinion, they get lashed out at, oh, well, you're, you're stupid for disagreeing with me and having your own view. So it's like that's the way I see the, see the whole thing. And that's going to create a lot of cognitive dissonance with a lot of people because we're so programmed to... Uh, to swing to the left or swing to the right and you know we see reality as like a light switch instead of a cake reality is more like a cake it's a dynamic configuration of variables all happen simultaneously you know you adjust one tiny little thing in a cake and you've got a completely different cake there's not much difference between cake and bread there's a lot of difference in the outward expression but and obviously I'm still live with everybody, but Jay has bounced off. Um, maybe his browser crashed again. I know that his uh, Firefox had crashed uh, earlier when we were trying to get into this thing at first earlier. So I don't know if he's going to be back or not. And... I don't know. I I think I've pretty much um, covered everything that I want to cover on this topic for the moment. I think I pretty much um, ranted at length about how I'm focusing on the dichotomy of conspiracy theorists versus, you know, not, and how it's all two aspects of the same thing, and um, Jay put in his two cents, and... Um, I can't really think of anything more to say on it. So, um, you know, questions, comments, whatever, you know. If you like what I had to say, if you hated what I had to say, if you think it was great, if you think I'm totally out of my mind and delusional, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, everybody's got the, uh, the right to view things as they want to view them, and I completely respect that, and I don't fault anybody for that. So I'm just sharing my view. Um, my information should not be any authority over you. I am not any authority over anyone. Don't believe me. Don't disbelieve me. Just, you know, think critically. Use your own mind. You know, like it, dislike it, whatever. But, you know, come from that place where you're deciding these things for yourself and not seeing information as your authority or, you know, thinking you have to believe or disbelieve or whatever. Because a disbelief is really just a belief anyway, isn't it? It's it's a belief in the lack thereof. So really, a belief, a disbelief is just a, another type of belief. And if you know, if you're on a treadmill like that, then no matter how far you go on a treadmill, you're always staying in the same one place. You're never really going anywhere. So 
just some food for thought for you people, you know, um, think it over or not, <laughs> it's entirely up to you. Um, thank you for listening and um, check out the rest of the videos on my channel and subscribe if you want or don't subscribe or don't check them out, <laughs> you know, whatever, I mean, that's, you know, your right to do whatever it is you want to do, that's cool by me, at the very least, I hope I've been uh, entertaining. And um, we'll see you next time. Peace out.